here. Yeah, just confirm with respect to the screen is visible. Yes, screen is completely visible. The audio is louder. Thank you, Gunal. Perfect. So uh, yes, as uh, mentioned, thanks everyone for joining in, and uh, you know we plan to cover uh, basically and understand the use cases of CDP uh, and what uh, the buzzword the CDP is and what uh, CDP caters to, and basically what are the capabilities uh, or where can we use the CDP uh, with respect to the Salesforce side, uh, you know, in terms of as a product. Uh, this is a quick introduction about myself. Uh, basically, as mentioned, I had the practice at uh, Social Beat, uh, basically been a part of the ecosystem for six years now. And uh, I mean, like looking for learning each day with respect to uh, each use case, each uh, new thing coming up, and which is like an exciting uh, journey overall. Uh, again, a quick uh, thank you to everyone. I mean, uh, and whichever part of the world you are at uh, with respect to, and whichever part of the day you are at, uh, like maybe midday, middle of the work, or maybe end of the uh, day with respect to the evening, but for joining this session and being a part of the session. So thank you for that. Uh, so overall, in terms of uh, basically what we want to cover, uh, so as we uh, said, basically, we will touch base on uh, overall in terms of CDP, in terms of what CDP is and what is involved in the CDP implementation that is there. Uh, I'll not spend much time here in terms of, I mean, it, it's like a quick overview, which I want to discuss. Uh, and then discuss with respect to what uh, is not a CDP. I mean, so basically, there, there are various products in the market with respect to which are, uh, you know, which proclaim to be CDPs or which uh, proclaim to be uh, use cases uh, as CDP, but uh, they are not. And uh, I mean, why they are not. Uh, then we'll touch base on specific use cases of CDP. Uh, I want to touch base on specific industry wise use cases as well with respect to picking up different industries and how CDP uh, is used uh, overall in terms of the Salesforce CDP coming into the picture. Uh, also want to discuss a case study uh, which of a project that we worked on in terms of implementing a CDP and how did we go about that and then uh, what was the advantage to the customer post implementation and then happy to I mean uh, open it for Q&A in terms of any questions and addressing those. So uh, overall in terms of what is CDP. So uh, CDP uh, mainly with respect to where uh, it allows companies to combine data. So you have sources of data, various sources of data. When you're doing your online marketing, you will have data from website, you'll have data from third party apps, you'll have data from your uh, transactional cost based systems, you'll have data from your ERPs, uh, you'll have data from say if you're doing ads, uh, you'll have data from your ad networks. Uh, if you have offline stores, you will have data from, uh, you know, the offline stores in terms of transactions and uh, data related to the customer. Uh, basically, all of that data, I mean, needs to be, uh, you know, have one uh, place where it is combined. Uh, because, I mean, it's like different data sets will have different structures, different formats, different uh, use cases with respect to how that data is being used. Uh, so basically, Combining all of that, bringing that into one place, and then using that data to offer that personalized experience. Uh, so as a brand, you want to give an experience to the user where you give that personalization, that personalized touch uh, is something which a CDP offers you to do. So you can get all your data from all the sources into the CDP, uh, and then basically use that to create the right segments, the rich segments, which you can use for say personalization, running offers, your marketing, overall promotions, uh, so on and so forth. In terms of uh, CDP, so basically, uh, you know, implementation, uh, basically what does it include? So as said, one is where you configure and connect your data sources. So all your various data sources that are there, you connect them to the CDP. So that uh, there is a like a data flow that happens between 
your existing system or your say any uh, transactional system that is there to the cdp you ingest that data so basically you ingest map and model so as said different systems will have a different data model or data structure but when you are getting that into the salesforce cdp you need to follow that one structure uh, have that have that unique structure defined so basically define that particular structure onto the cdp ingest that data create that data model into the cdp basically once all your data is done comes in into a standardized format uh, you know and is ingested into the cdp post that you define rule sets so uh, this is where you define the rules in terms of uh, how that data will be unified how that data will be merged how that uh, data will be identified so basically how that identity resolutions will be created will be mapped to your data set which is there which you ingested uh, basically define those rules and uh, basically set up those rules uh, you know activate those rules so that uh, from your overall data set you can create those uh, rich data sets rich segments and basically then activate those segments on the various platforms that you want to use for say personalization for marketing so i mean this is in a nutshell i mean it's like a literal broad summary of what goes in an implementation but when it comes to an actual implementation i mean the uh, specifically ingestion modeling and uh, you know the mapping of data as well as creating those identity resolution rules i mean it's it's like a complicated uh, task where it requires a lot of like brainstorming planning uh, ideation i would say um, grip on the overall data where you need to be familiar with your all your data sets all your different data sources from where it is coming from and uh, you know then perform these two steps so that um, you know you get those right segments those rich segments which you want to use overall for marketing uh, what is not a cdp now i'm starting in terms of you know with respect to what is not a cdp uh, where you know there are so various companies i mean uh, and definitely i will not i mean you know i would not name the companies but there are various players in the market who proclaim to have uh, the cdps and they say that you know this is the uh, actual like a C views out of it or say uh, you know reports out of it or uh, from that data set you can create like a loyalty program where uh, you know based on the data set based on the visualized data uh, you see a, like a loyalty program which you want to run uh, and do also like a reporting and analytics so say for example uh, you have a mall i mean there is a Uh, consider a mall uh, which has like uh, so as a brand there are about eight ten physical malls that are present and now assume where uh, you know people visiting the mall uh, you know there are n number of people visiting uh, the mall that is there making purchases within the shops in the mall uh, you know and so there is a lot of data that gets generated now the reports that you create out of that so there are various reports that also you can create so for example the number of footfalls into the mall the number of people frequently visiting the mall uh, say the number of people visiting a particular brand shop inside a mall um, the purchases that they make the ticket size of the purchases that they make uh, so there are there's a lot of data that gets generated but basically uh, what the you know this particular brand say is where generating reports out of that data creating reports creating those dashboards and visualized uh, you know analytics is what a cdp is supposed to do but actually that's not particularly a use case or not a cdp use case and it's not a cdp per se uh, because that's more of an analytics use case of uh, you know like what analytics is involved or what reports are involved or what kind of dashboards are involved 
and it's more to do with respect to uh, you know i would say from a salesforce perspective so say for example there is a loyalty uh, cloud which is there which you use for you know running loyalty programs and overall your loyalty that is there uh, as a brand <clears throat> when it comes to dashboard it is where you know you have datorama where you can create reports using so the marketing reports using datorama uh, you you have tableau with respect to which also helps you in terms of visualizing data creating those reports that is there so there are various different platforms so basically this that is proclaimed to be a cdp is actually not a cdp and not a cdp use case which is being addressed but yeah i mean somewhere i mean you know this players proclaim that i mean you know that's an actual use case of a cdp and that's a particular cdp that is there but which is not coming to now uh, in terms of moving to use cases uh, with respect to cdp so see this is a, like a like a very common generic use case which i have picked up with respect to to understand what cdp is and what cdp does so say i have considered a d2c website and i have considered a mall uh, i mean with respect to for an offline sale perspective uh, consider a user i mean so consider myself being the user say i visit the d2c website of the brand i register on the website uh, when i'm registering and providing my credentials i mean i give my uh, say name phone number 1 email id 1 uh, as the credentials that is there on the d2c website now uh, and along with my demographic information in terms of address and other uh, location per se then uh, i mean i drop off the d2c website i visit the mall uh, as an offline and say uh, when they are doing the onboarding or the uh, you know uh, like a uh, visitor registration uh, basically i again register myself but this time basically i give uh, the brand my credentials too so where i give my name but this time i give my e uh, like email id which i'm not using frequently and maybe another phone number which i'm using or uh, say i may give the same phone number which i used for the d2c website but the email id that i give is uh, particularly different now uh, what happens is if you don't have a cdp it will be where there'll be two different uh, you know panels who will get created for the brand and for the mall and when they are doing the marketing communication it is where they'll send me multiple communications because i mean i have registered using two different email ids that are there but uh, like logically technically it is where i am the same person i am the same person which they are targeting as uh, means when i have registered for the d2c website as well as for the mall so it's where you know they need to have a mechanism where they can find out that i am the same person so basically that's where a cdp comes into the picture so basically once that data is in so the data from the registration of the d2c website as well as the data that i provided when i visited the mall uh, let that be into a like a form of an application or let that be even um, an offline register whatever the case may be but both the data sets once they are into the cdp basically the cdp will unify that so the unification step that happens is where it will identify saying that okay although the email id is provided for two different instances are different but the person to which the email id belongs to that is kunal and basically it will unify that data and identify that data and bring it, create that one view of the data that is there against my name with respect to the various details and various touch points so that as a brand basically you can uh, manage the communication better so that i am not bombarded with the same communication because it will what will happen is post the cdp is implemented post the data is unified post the brand identifies that it is the same person basically i will be just be interacting once with the brand where you know the brand will send out a promotional communication and at the same time the brand will also save money in terms of uh, the communication because say if if the brand is communicating via emails or sms or 
whatsapp any form of messaging that they do uh, with a prospect or with a existing customer it is where they are spending money with respect to each sense that are there now uh, if they do that two cents uh, to me to the same person that is kunal they will spend the money twice whereas with the cdp they will be able to optimize their cost and reach out to me only once and uh, you know optimize their spend on the marketing that is there so that's like one uh, you know overall use case with respect to what a cdp does uh, say when it's like a d2c website and a mall uh, that we are looking at moving on uh, in terms of uh, second uh, where it can also look at uh, like you know retargeting ads or uh, say stop retargeting ads so this is also say consider from a brand perspective where uh, you know i have uh, made a purchase offline and uh, basically i am being shown ads on my social media with respect to uh, you know facebook instagram my linkedin i mean whatever that social media media channel is <clears throat> now if there is no cdp implemented basically even though i have made a purchase offline uh, and there is no data unification or uh, streamlining uh, basically uh, of the past data as well as uh, the online data that is there i'll be still shown ads i'll be still continuing to see ads of the brand on the social media channels that is there uh, which will lead to you know spending of money for the brand which will lead to spending of money uh, in terms of your various ad networks that uh, you know in terms of the social media social networks that they charge whereas if they have a, like a cdp implemented so it's where once they know that i have made a purchase offline and say uh i mean as per the product life cycle if i'm not going to make a purchase for the next 3 to 6 months it is where they can stop showing me the online ads uh where in terms of an experience it's a good experience because i don't want to be bombarded with ads of a product which i have already made a purchase of at the same time the, the brand can save money from the various social channels in terms of by saving money on the ads Uh, which are not to be shown to i mean you know people who made the purchase so it's like that's where uh, you can also stop retargeting ads uh, using a cdp and implementing a cdp uh, you can do that with respect to the brand saving money there then uh, coming to in terms of uh, another use case which is there with respect to like a cdp and a crm so now uh, consider a case with respect to where uh, say they there is marketing cloud as a brand there is a crm where they have a support agent team who is uh, like or a contact center which is taking calls from um, you know customers in terms of addressing them in terms of support queries and uh, it's like where uh, you know they receive the n number of calls with respect to n number of queries that are there in terms of uh, their product or as a brand in terms of addressing queries now uh, say basically they are doing that with the contact center so that is their offline medium via phone number or a contact center that is your crm uh, online basically there is an email which is being sent out from marketing cloud with respect to uh you know different communications different uh, say offers promotions uh, you know all of those things that are there now uh, say for example uh, online it is where uh, say there is a communication which is gone out from the brand uh, addressing a particular query or say there is a particular query being asked online uh, or via an email by the particular user to the brand and that's when the offline contact center reaches out to you uh, for say promoting an offer or maybe uh, say even just reaching out with respect to a renewal uh, an insurance renewal uh, it is important where uh, the contact center or the customer service agent gets that one view with respect to uh, you know what the person has interacted with in terms of your online communications online mediums etc 
and so that when they are on a call they can provide that connected experience uh, in terms of to the customer instead of providing a, like a disjointed experience to the customer so the customer service agent gets that entire view of that particular customer of what the interaction has been and based on that they can provide an overall personalized connected support to the end customer when they are talking to them with respect to uh, you know via the crm or via the contact center and provide that connected uh, you know experience to the end customer then uh, also you can do with respect to uh, targeting users via active channels so uh, say you know once your data is into the cdp and uh, you know uh, you have your data basically model created into the cdp uh, you are tracking with respect to the various social channels that a person interacts with uh, the cdp also gives you with respect to so say for example uh, i mean i am very active on uh, uh, LinkedIn per se, but uh, I mean, I'm not that active on uh, Twitter or I'm not that active on Facebook. I mean, uh, I check my Facebook literally say once a month, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the normal scenario that is there. Now, uh, say as a brand, uh, if the brand is communicating with me in terms of, uh, you know, say via F Facebook as well and uh, via LinkedIn as well. Uh, if they communicate with me via Facebook, what will happen is their ads will go waste because, I mean, I don't, I just don't log into Facebook. So even if you send me up like a notification, a push notification from Facebook that I receive, uh, I am not, uh, I mean, I normally don't log in as a user. So basically it's a waste of money. It's a waste of that ad spent uh, on Facebook that is there. And plus you are not going to get any interaction from me. Whereas uh, LinkedIn is something where I'm active on. I check it like day in, day out. Uh, so that's where, you know, once my data is in and once the CDP identifies, it can identify with respect to that saying that, okay, for Kunal, LinkedIn is the most active channel. He's currently active in terms of, uh, you know, the activities performed. And that's where it's best to personalize uh, and target personalized communication with respect to the brand and the brand information so that there are better chances of me in terms of uh, say either going back to the website and transacting or say going to the offline store and transacting or I mean whatever that medium is or whatever the outcome that is expected of that particular campaign to achieve that it's a, like a much higher result of uh, you know, achieving that outcome that is there. So basically, CDP also allows you to identify that active channel and then target users on those particular active channels. Now, this is something which, uh, you know, say even uh, Marketing Cloud does with respect to where uh, you can identify in terms of where the user is active. The only thing I would say is where, uh, so there is, a, again, the difference is Marketing Cloud is more from, um, you know, designing your personalized communications, designing your customer journeys and targeting. And even if you want to track with respect to the active channels, et cetera, it is where you need to do a slight data churning, slight, uh, you know, report analytics to see with respect to, you know, what are the channels that a person is active at. Whereas in terms of a CDP, it's just like a data flag. So say against my name, it will be like one particular flag, which you just need to read into or feel that you need to read based on which identify saying that, which is the most active channel uh, that I am on. So it becomes an easier process in terms of identifying that and basically helps you in terms of reaching out to the right audience on the right channel uh, and getting a better conversion that is there. Then uh, also with respect to where a CDP helps you to track an entire customer journey. So when we mean an entire customer journey uh, where uh, say right from, uh, you know, the person was a lead or a prospect. So a lead, lead converted to a prospect, prospect to like a customer. Uh, once I, I became a customer and say did a transaction, 
it helps you to track that entire funnel entire journey from you know what source did a user come from was it via an affiliate ad was it via a paid search ad was it via a direct campaign so it helps you to do that entire uh, you know journey tracking of what source i came from what is the transaction that i did uh, means how much time with respect to it took from you know from me to become a, like a prospect to a lead to a customer uh, which were the channels i interacted with and then basically once you identify that particular journey for a particular user or say your customers you will also be able to then basically communicate with them better uh, you will also be able to uh, you know dis- make better decisions so say as the example that we spoke here where uh you know in terms of between linkedin and facebook now if we say take that same example here where you know through the cdp we are able to identify that i came through linkedin uh, and it was like a direct campaign carried out on linkedin through which i mean you know i interacted with the brand i transacted with the brand then basically you can basically one continue those communications in terms of via linkedin with me so that there is better uh, you know brand uh, communication as well as me interacting and say maybe transacting um, and you can also cancel the other channels so say for example you can stop showing me ads on facebook stop interacting with me on uh, say instagram and you know reduce those spends that are there save money there with respect to your ads with respect to your campaigns with respect to your spend so cdp helps you to track that entire customer journey and then take better decisions with respect to uh, in terms of your marketing marketing spends and segmentation that is there next uh, this is also with respect to uh, like again uh, it can be more of uh, the customer service experience or like say even a chatbot based communication where in this case say for example the prospect is looking at a credit card i mean you know on a bank website and it clicks on the chatbot now uh, you know with a cdp in place with a like a marketing solution in place uh, it will be able to get connect the entire dot for that particular prospect for that particular uh, you know lead in terms of previous interactions previous inquiries previous queries that are there and then you can also even personalize your chatbot experience with respect to communication uh, interaction of the particular person also redirect the chatbot experience so say for example you identify saying that okay this particular uh, person who is communicating on the chatbot is uh, you know somewhat uh, you know a, a high propensity uh, prospect or a high propensity lead who will convert i mean with some push that is there so one you can personalize the chatbot experience at the same time the chatbot can lead to pushing it to a customer service agent basically who can then address it in terms of uh, you know the one on one query is personalizing that experience and lead to a conversion in terms of that person either getting the queries addressed and having that experience with respect to the brand or also do a transaction with the brand in terms of a conversion and making that right purchase that is there so that's where you can even personalize your chatbot communication chatbot based support banking and financial sector before i move to Uh, i mean in terms of the other sectors where cdp is used uh, so in this case say for example uh, you know customer visits a bank branch and so shows interest in a certain product now this has happened offline where uh, you know offline that customer has shown interest into a credit card now say that offline data that is there is ingested into the cdp and basically once it is ingested uh you know it is where say once a person visits the bank website based on the past uh, you know visit the offline visit he he or she can be shown a like a personalized uh, home page uh, 
you know banner with respect to so this is more of a like in in case of it 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 will be a merged case of cdp as well as uh, like so cdp will help you to create that right segment and basically then it will be where interaction studio will come in where you can show like a personalized home page banner uh, on the website a personalized uh, offer or you can personalize that website experience that is there so basically cdp will be the data enrichment which it will carry out for from the offline and the online sources and your offers personalization will be managed via interaction studio but again i mean it is where you can uh, use a cdp to uh, basically unify your data offline and online and then show a better offer to a particular customer who shown interest in a product so that uh, you know he goes ahead makes that purchase does the transaction uh, you know once he has that intention to purchase that is there then uh, again in terms of this is with respect to uh, like a, again a retail contact center so say consider a retail brand uh, and uh, you know when say uh, a retailer uh, or and like let it be in terms of an offline and let it be in terms of an online website uh, as well where uh, as a brand you are doing that retail e-commerce transactions uh, so what will happen is uh, where the cdp will identify that experience on or the visits on the website it will identify that particular user in terms of uh, what the user demographics or details are and once it identifies uh, you know in terms of basically the user the user pattern it will it can also send out triggers to basically the uh, you know contact center or support team who can then basically like you know at that stage if they see that that propensity of the a uh, user or the person uh, to inter uh, transact at that very moment or to transact is really high basically can call up the customer pro pro address his queries address his questions and push him to make a transaction uh, either by visiting to a nearest store or with respect to an online so basically it will be where uh, you know the support agent can also personalize the communication and lead to like more walk-ins in terms of an offline store or more visits in terms of an uh, online store and lead to more transactions that are there then uh, coming to in terms of uh, you know one case study which i wanted to discuss uh, so in terms of uh, say you know we worked with a telecom provider i mean so basically he was Uh, uh you know they were providing uh, like the telecom our sim card based services uh, and in terms of like uh, you know mobile cellular devices uh, that were there uh, so what he did was basically uh, you know say he sold a plan he sold a plan with respect to uh, you know in terms of so basically they used to sell plans and they used to sell mobile devices uh, this was more of like b2c as well as b2b because uh, a lot of b2c corporate plans etc or say corporate providers also used to come to that particular provider and basically purchase plans that were there now uh, there were instances where uh, you know many corporate uh, providers came in and registered with that telecom provider and uh, say they used to come in they used to make the purchases and basically use the plan that is there now as a telecom provider initially without a cdp uh, it was where so they just used to treat him as a one of b2c customer and basically sell the plan and uh, basically then uh, look at other prospects other customers that were there but when they had a cdp so once they implemented a cdp uh, basically we could unify that data for that particular brand where uh, you know we could identify saying that x number of corporate uh, users exist of the plan and so basically if uh, you know there are x number of corporate users it is where we can look at targeting x into y number of the total corporate so it's like say if one person so from social beat 
has uh, interacted with that telecom provider it is where uh, you know based on my demographics my credentials i can look at having a, like a corporate plan sold out to the entire organization in terms of social beat so that it leads to an increase in terms of number of customers for the telecom provider so basically you know once we implemented the cdp we could identify that uh, you know corporate members and then basically target those corporate plans to those organizations so that it led to more uh, people joining in the telecom provider and buying in services from the telecom provider that was there now overall i mean so uh, you know net net i mean this is in terms of uh, you know so there are several use cases with respect to you know overall on the cdp side but i mean if we sit and summarize with respect to you know what the overall use cases are so where cdp using cdp you can do your outbound marketing campaign uh, you can you know improvise on your customer service support your data management uh, you can do those predictive analytics in terms of uh, what a user will buy what a user will transact with Uh, you can also provide support to the customer service agent uh, case cases that we saw so where you can do those b2b support b2c supports that are there uh, you can look at uh, you know optimizing communication optimizing those e-commerce recommendations in terms of uh, your product recommendations or offers or uh, all of those things uh, you can do that aggregation of online offline omni channel communications that you are doing as a overall as a part of marketing spends so you can combine all of that uh, and you know optimize your overall omni channel experience or sense uh, do real time behavioral analysis so in terms of of users of uh, and then based on that personalized communication uh the online experience so basically improve the online experience improve the online experience for your end users and the overall digital advertising in terms of where uh, say increase the spends depending on the channels that people react to decreasing the spends or stopping the ads on channels which people are not reacting to so you can do basically all of those uh, you know in terms of uh, you know various campaigns uh, under these broader campaigns that are there using a cdp and uh, basically optimize your campaigns so uh, improvise on your you know data sets and use the cdp effectively with respect to your marketing sends and marketing spends that are there yes i will open it for questions so uh, happy to take questions happy to take uh, i mean in terms of any clarification required on any of these use cases uh, happy to address those uh thank you so much kunal uh we'll, we'll see if we have any questions sure we have one from madhukar says like in linkedin we get notifications when we connect or follow then how can we send notifications in linkedin so in terms of uh, this is specifically with respect to uh, you know the linkedin ads that we are referring to so uh in terms of connections is something which is uh, you know handled uh, where you interact with a particular uh, you know user or a particular uh, you know you're connecting with an individual but this is more with respect to linkedin social ads uh, where you know linkedin also has an ad network through which you can run ads you can promote your brand promote your company and show ads to people uh, so that's where uh, you know you can use a cdp with respect to the linkedin ads that is there So there is one more question from Saurabh. Uh, he is asking how CDP collaborate with marketing cloud personalization. What exact setting need to be done with it? So, uh, in terms of, so we are referring to two different uh, use cases. So CDP is your basically which manages the data, unifies the data, 
and then basically helps you to create that rich segment. So say, for example, uh, where uh, I am a particular user. So the example that we saw where I visited an offline store and I also visited an online store. Now, uh, so say once I visited the online store, the CDP will uh, track my behavior, identify with respect to that, uh, you know, so-and-so individual, Kunal, with respect to so-and-so details uh, visited and these are the demographics that are there. Now, CDP will so do that data management that is there. But with respect to now once, uh, you know, so that is from the connection perspective and say from a interaction studio perspective, it is where it will track what all pages did I visit, what all products that I saw on the website, how much time did I spend there, uh, you know, it will track all of those and say the next time, I mean, so say then I leave the website, I don't do that transaction or I just leave the website, uh, I mean, you know, looking at a couple of products and say maybe I come in post, uh, you know, four days or five days. Uh, it is where I don't want to go through that cycle again, right, of where I start from the first page, look at all the products, look at all the things that are there. It is where Interaction Studio will come in, where based on my past visit on the website, it will track uh, and it will start from the page where I left off and help me in terms of having that uh, continued experience on the website so that I don't have to repeat my steps again. So basically we are referring to two different use cases. So it will be where CDP's data will be an input into the Interaction Studio. Interaction Studio will provide that personalized experience that is there. Hopefully I'm able to answer that question. Yep. Uh, we have one more question from Bastor. Can we define a unique ID to match profiles from different sources? Yes. So it does that where, so basically uh, it doesn't happen initially. So initially, as we saw, it is where the first step is you ingest data from various sources that are there. So, you know, you ingest your data from CRM, from your website, your, uh, you know, different platforms that are there. Uh, and those will have different IDs that are there because, I mean, they will replicate the IDs, uh, you know, which you carry from your source systems. But once you actually do that unification, so once that actual data unification happens, it is where CDP generates an ID uh, and which is a, like a unique ID against which all the information is managed and recorded. So basically, uh, it will be where it will be the second stage where that unique ID is created during the unification. And then you can use that with respect to your further campaigns, your further uh, data usage that is there. So we have one, one more from Sabarin. Uh, you presented a lot of use cases. But can you illustrate the means by which you would feed the info into the CDP? Example, the preferred channel case. Sorry, can I just... Uh... Sorry, can you just come back on that? Okay. So you presented a lot of use cases, but can you illustrate the means by which you would feed the info into the CDP? Example, the preferred channel case. Okay. So uh, in terms of say the preferred channel case that was there, right? Uh, so, I mean, once we actually look at the CDP dashboard that is there, right? Uh, so say once the data is in, like once the data is into, uh, you know, the CDP. Uh, so say, for example, consider it as a perspective where C your CDP is a system. Uh, there is, uh, as a brand, I have, I mean, a brand has purchased the CDP the brand has my data that is there. So Kunal and against my data. So basically it will have a lot of things in terms of name, email ID, phone number, gender, education, preferred, uh, you know, brand, preferred uh, color option of the particular brand, preferred option of a product, which that particular brand is selling, uh, so on and so forth. And it will also have in terms of uh, interactions with the brand. So say, uh, you know, uh, so how am I interacting with that particular brand? Am I visiting the website? And uh, do I have an app installed? Do I have, uh, am I visiting the Instagram page uh, frequently? 
So basically it tracks all of those information that is there. In that you can also track with respect to basically the cha uh, you know channel. So there'll be one field where it will also track what is the preferred channel of uh, me interacting with that brand. Is it where I have given a preference of WhatsApp over email or is it where I have given all the social channels or is it where I have said that, no, I don't want to be interacting with this particular brand online, but I want to be, uh, you know, say only seeing offline ads or say, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So basically that preferred channel or that preferred medium will be as one particular field, which will be a part of your data set and which basically then brands can use with respect to interacting with that particular user that is there. Perfect. We have one more question, uh, Kunal, from Kushal Nehte. So right. all the analytical data from the CDP is stored in objects. And can we sync that in SFMC through SFDC and SFMC connection or anything else is needed? asking two questions if the data is stored uh, in objects if so right. uh, right. does it synchronize through sfdc and sfmc connection or do we need anything else no so we can sync it via sfdc uh, so basically uh, i mean that's the beauty of the overall i mean you know salesforce ecosystem where uh, you have that one system that a particular so your cdp talks to and then for marketing cloud basically your sfdc when becomes your single source of truth. So where uh, you can then push uh, the data via the MC connector and then use it into the marketing cloud that is there. And if not, I mean, you can do a direct connection as well uh, with respect to where uh, between CDP and, uh, you know, marketing cloud via the APIs or, uh, uh, you know, the various other sources. But as an ideal based approach, yes, it is via objects and having CDP, SFDC and uh, SFMC to talk amongst uh, themselves. Perfect. Don't see any more questions. Sure. Thank you so much, Kunal, for your wonderful session today. And you know, it's it's quite uh, you know engaging as well. Uh, there are a lot of questions as well. Thank you so much for answering them patiently. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all.